Welcome to the English Language Institute of Singapore's podcast. I'm your host, Victoria. And I'm your co-host, Alison. This is the last of a four-part series about Mrs. Adeline Lin Tio, Madam Ko Ting Ting, and Madam Irene Leong's Classroom Inquiry Project. In the first part, we listened to Adeline talk about starting the research, determining the research question, and designing their intervention. Our research question was, what is the effect of guided journaling on reluctant writers' attitude towards writing? In the second part, she explained the methodology of this study. In the third part, Adeline talked about the findings and their implications for teaching and learning. In this last episode on this inquiry project, we'll hear about how they communicated their findings, as well as what advice and tips they have for other teachers who might be interested in conducting classroom inquiry. How and with whom did we communicate our inquiry? When we completed the study, we prepared PowerPoint slides to share our findings at the following platforms. We invited colleagues to join us at AST for two teacher-led workshops. We also presented our study at a concurrent session at the Ellis Conference in September 2017 so as to reach more teachers who may find it useful. We also submitted an article for the Ellis Research Reports publication. We felt it was important to share what we had learned with other teachers because we wanted to inspire teachers to conduct their own classroom inquiries. We also wanted to reach out to teachers who were struggling with reluctant writers and encourage them to try our guided approach to journaling as a way to motivate their young writers. They really reached out to teachers about their findings on different platforms, didn't they? Yes. Communicating the research is a really important part of the inquiry journey. Not only does doing a classroom inquiry inform your own pedagogical practice, it can also extend the knowledge of others in the fraternity. What struck me is that they shared it in different forms to different audiences, whether it was through workshops, presentations, or publications. And don't forget, Victoria, in this podcast itself. (laughs) That's right. Adeline also gave some really great tips for teachers who might want to embark on their own classroom inquiry. Let's have a listen. You need to be clear about the purpose of your inquiry. Beef up your literature review on the topic of interest. Draw up a proposal and your research questions. Have a research timeline in mind. See if you can gather like-minded persons for a learning conversation on your research interest. Seek help from colleagues who have done action research before for advice. I feel it is crucial to choose an area of interest to pursue and focus. Everything must serve a purpose. It is important to find deep meaning in what you do. Yes, deep meaning is very important to find in pedagogical practice. Adeline gave us a list of other readings they consulted for their inquiry, which we have popped into the show notes of this episode on the Ellis website. Well, to our teacher listeners out there, Adeline says she hopes that this podcast series clarifies for you the steps for conducting an inquiry. She hopes it will inspire you to embark on your own study. Aw, she has definitely inspired me. All right. That brings us to the end of this four-part series on an inquiry walkthrough. A link to their full research report can be found in this episode's show notes, located at go.gov.sg forward slash E-L-I-S podcast. I'm your host, Victoria. And I'm Alison. Thank Thank you for for listening. listening.